The sad thing is, I think that it's probably fairly easy to stifle creativity. And this potentially begins, could begin in early childhood, when parents ignore their children's questions about why does this work and, you know, that light up there, what makes it, you know, what makes it bright and what happens when I turn off the light switch and so on. Sometimes parents don't know the answer and so they brush the kid off. During early developmental years, any, you know, exploratory, uh, curious kind of thinking is, uh, really very important to, to nurture because it does enhance creativity. Within the school system, uh, you know, if it's too regimented, there's the risk of stifling creativity. All over the world, it seems, at least in America, and I think here in New Zealand, there's a growing tendency to have a set curriculum, have national testing, have teachers teach to that set curriculum, and use student performance on standard tests as a measure of successful teaching. Most teachers whom I know who want to enhance creativity hate that kind of program because, you know, they've just got to stick to this specific syllabus so that their students get good scores and they, they can't, you know, go outside the system and, and explore. I think that anything in a society that just puts a lid on originality uh, is gonna stifle creativity. Another thing that I think can potentially stifle uh, creativity is early tracking of people, encouraging them to identify themselves as experts in science or experts in the arts. The tendency to say, you know, well, it's arts or science. Really, it should be arts and science. And some of the most creative people in the world are people who have that fusion of arts and science, and they are what we call polymaths. Polymath in Greek literally means poly, many, mathane, to know, so knowing many things. There have been lots and lots and lots of polymaths who have been uh, among the most highly creative people in society, Leonardo, Michelangelo being prime examples.